Welcome back, it's another one by the Bling Baby. Today I'm showing how to rhinestone the Stitch Piggy Bank. You'll only need a few materials, and these are listed in the description box below. Let's get started. For starters, for me personally, I like to sand my surfaces and wipe them clean with isopropyl alcohol. My glue of choice today is Crystal Glaze, and you can get it from her website listed below. This works perfect for those PVC piggy banks. So I'm gonna go ahead and start with the eyes. No matter where you decide to work, it's best to outline that area so you can fill it in, and it gives a cleaner appearance. The size I'm using here is 3mm or SS12, with a few smaller sizes to fill in those tight gaps. I want to be honest with you, these take several hours, but if you can portion off a section to finish, it'll be much easier. I like to start with the eyes, I feel like that's the easiest spot, but like I said, you can start wherever you want. Something to remember is just to be patient with yourself. Projects like these can be overwhelming just because of the size of them. But just start in one spot and keep going. Like I said earlier, it's best to go ahead and outline wherever you're working and follow that line and use it as a guide. That'll keep your line straight and give you a more uniform look. I guess this would be considered a contour pattern because it's kind of like a rounded shape. I'm just following it all the way around. But honestly, I don't worry about it too much. I'm just trying to fill in this area. A lot of the time people ask me, hey, why do we sand our surfaces? Why do you do that? That is optional. I only sand to create more surface area for my rhinestones to stick. If you do sand, please be careful around the painted areas because the paint can scratch off. So just be gentle. Definitely wouldn't skip the step of wiping with isopropyl alcohol though. Don't forget to keep that glue tip clean. An old clump of glue can interfere with adhesion on your projects. With that being said, it's really important to make sure that your rhinestone is lying flat so it can properly bond with your surface. I also want to add not all glues are created equal. Whatever glue you choose, just make sure that it is compatible with the material that you're using. I made that mistake early on and I lost a lot of rhinestones on my projects. So for instance, you would look at the back and see like what materials it'll work with. You also want to check ingredients to see if you're allergic to anything and work in a well-ventilated area. We want to be safe and if you're using glues for a prolonged period of time, you want to take that into consideration whether or not you have like kids or pets. Those are just things to think about. So down here, I have started to line his mouth with the 2mm rhinestones and that is just for a cleaner look. You don't have to do this. That's completely up to you, but I usually like to outline with a smaller rhinestone so I can have like a cleaner, crisper look. So again, once you have that guideline, go ahead and follow it all the way down. And where it gets narrow, add a smaller rhinestone. One of the biggest tips I can offer is not to overthink it. Just kind of move with it and don't overanalyze anything. Moving down on the front, small hair part of his chest. I decided to use 2mm rhinestones to really um, bring out the details of that, but everything kind of like goes together anyway with the same color. Also, I'm using the color Gummy Shark. That is AB Transparent Aqua. And once again, these are resin rhinestones. You can do so much with resin rhinestones. I think they do get a bad rap sometimes because they are more you know, affordable than glass or preciosa or anything like that. But honestly, they still sparkle and shine. All right, and moving on to the back. So I'm gonna go ahead and use these sugar glass resin rhinestones on these dark blue portions here. I really like using transparent rhinestones because they pick up any color that's underneath pretty well. I didn't have a perfect blue that would match the blue on the back of him, so that's why I went ahead with the transparent rhinestones, but I'm a transparent rhinestone girl. I always will love that rhinestone and I love the versatility of it as well. So again, I outlined that area and now I'm just filling it in. Start the line at the top and just follow it all the way down and where it gets narrow, go ahead and put a smaller rhinestone there. Go ahead and continue the same thing here. Go ahead and outline and then fill this area in. Keep in mind that his back head patch is a little bit crooked so it may appear crooked and that's completely normal. But like I said, just find a guideline and keep going down and fill it in with a smaller filler stone. When you're working with transparent rhinestones, a problem people run into is something called a fish eye. 
that is where you don't push the glue all the way down or don't have enough glue underneath that rhinestone. So it will kind of like dry in a way that looks like a fish's eye and you'll have like a little bubble. So for that, to prevent that, just make sure you're pressing that rhinestone all the way down and have enough glue underneath that rhinestone. That should prevent a lot of your fish eyes, but you know, I still have some of them. His little feet are so cute, so I'm just going around in a circle and then filling in the tiny spaces with the two MMs. And now we're doing his nose, following that around. And on his little toes, you can use a two MM rhinestone or a three MM, it's up to you. Um, once again, just make sure you have a lot of glue under that area. And we're moving on to the ears. The ears were actually my favorite part. Once again, we're just doing that outline and following it around. I did work from the outside and the inside so I could kind of meet in the middle for a more, I guess, like uniformed look. That is optional. Once again, working with those transparent rhinestones, I didn't have a perfect color that I felt would match with this, but honestly, you could probably use like a pink or something. That's completely up to you. No matter what, just be patient and trust the process. When you're finished with the project, it'll usually come out really beautiful. So don't second guess yourself. Just keep working on the project, keep going. And like I said, I promise you, when you're done with that project, you'll probably like it. And if you don't like it, then hey, you have a learning experience, correct? A win is a win. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead with those four mem rhinestones and we're gonna go ahead and fill in his body. So I'm gonna do these ears. I already did one ear here, so I'm just gonna go ahead and continue the same method that I taught you guys earlier where I'm outlining everything and then filling it in. Keep in mind that around the ears, it gets a little tight and narrow as you get kind of to the base of the ear. So for that, just be patient with yourself and I will show you how to get those areas a little bit later. For me, I like to keep that pencil tip sharp best sharpener that I found for these is a stainless steel one, and I'll link it down below for you guys. That's why you see me using these pencils a lot. I can always sharpen them when I need to. All right, so ears are done. All right, and we're going ahead to his back. Just remember that this bank sits flat, so you don't want to bring your rhinestones too low. Otherwise, you'll be sitting on, he'll be sitting on the rhinestones. So just kind of like have a line where you want it to stop, and I'll show you guys how I did that. For this back portion, I'm just going ahead and outlining this area here. And that's just so it can look cleaner. You don't have to do that. You could just start from the top and go down, but I feel like it's easier to do it this way. And you should have something like this. I want you guys to see how I didn't go too far with that rhinestone line at the base. So you're gonna wanna go ahead and stop there. Um, like I said, you don't want him to sit on the rhinestones. You want him to sit completely flat. And we are home stretch. I'm working on his face. Once again, just go ahead and fill in the area the best you can, as straight as possible. All right, and when you get to the head, go ahead and go, well, I guess you can go any way you'd like, but here I decided to go side to side. So I just kept my lines, as you can see, they're very straight and everything is even. And to keep my lines even when there's a narrow spot, I just put a filler stone. I'm gonna go ahead and continue with this pattern and bring it all the way to the back of his little tiny, I guess it'd be cowlick area, and use that line as a guide to continue bringing that pattern all the way back. And then I will show you how I kind of like wrap it around and keep it straight. You'll know if your lines are straight because everything will look even, but if they become crooked, just know that you can typically fix it. I'm gonna bring a line down on the side of his face just to kind of keep everything straight. So I'm gonna follow one line all the way down and then fill in in between that area. For the tight caps, go ahead and grab a micro brush and add some glue. These are listed in the description below. And then that is how you can apply your glue with ease so you don't have to struggle. And then press that rhinestone down in there. As you can see, those lines are straight. So I'm gonna go ahead and bring them back. But like I said, I'm gonna go ahead and bring it far back and then kind of like curve it below. You can kind of see how I did that here. So now I have a few guidelines I can come from and I'm just gonna go ahead and continue to follow those and fill them in. So for this project, I used around 7,000 rhinestones, seven or 8,000 give or take. And it does sound like a lot, but once you get portions complete, doesn't seem like a lot. And this is it right here, final stretch. 
on the abnormal curves, just do your best to fill it in. And here's our final product. Thank you for watching. See you next time.